Many around my age probably remember talking to our friends on AOL Instant Messenger after school and using NetSpeak for things like LOL for laughing out loud, JK for just kidding, or BRB for be right back, which no one really does anymore with the internet. But every generation has a way of shortening their writing, it seems. Decades ago, high schoolers took classes on a way of writing called shorthand, which was used in offices for dictation, for reporters taking notes at a quick pace, and court reporters transcribing the proceedings. But sometimes even court reporters couldn't write shorthand quickly enough to keep up with fast-talking lawyers. And as seen in all great infomercials, someone said, there's got to be a better way. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind Steno Masks. But first, a quick word from Hashtag Ponder Family, a great group of indie podcasters like me. What is the Ponder Family? Hey, this is Shane. That's not Shane. That's a robot set by the government. And that's Kenny from I'm now. I'm a that robot I'm, too. From now that I'm older. More like now that I'm robots. This is Gabriel Russo from the Hollywood Scandals of Yesteryear podcast. This is Steve from the Drift and Ramble podcast. This is Nick from the Epic Film Guys podcast. This is Emily from the Story Behind. This is Adam from Everyone Has a Podcast. This is Sean Harrigan from the Cinescape podcast. We are you podcasters coming together in a community to help one another grow so follow us on twitter at potter and family and use the hashtag potter and family in your tweets and retweet other people who do the same potter and family where great podcasts come home before we talk about steno masks we need to talk a little bit about stenography and most notably shorthand it might be hard to imagine for some but past generations usually had to take a shorthand or stenography class in high school. But you may be surprised to find out certain professions still require the knowledge of shorthand. In fact, the National Council for the Training of Journalists in the United Kingdom requires its students to be able to write at a speed of 100 words per minute to complete its program, which can really only be accomplished using shorthand. Sir Isaac Pittman presented what's considered the first type of shorthand in 1837, which is based not on the actual words, but on the sounds and syllables of what's being spoken. John Robert Gregg introduced another well-known type of shorthand, consisting of symbols based on the phonetics of the spoken words, rather than just shortening of words themselves. Shorthand wasn't just used for journalists or court reporters. Artists, counterculture activists, and even authors and scientists such as Charles Dickens and Isaac Newton used shorthands for their notes and journals back then. Remember when I said journalists in the UK had to be able to transcribe at least 100 words per minute? That seems like a lot, but the average rate of speaking is about 163 words per minute. And a Chicago court reporter named Horace Webb found himself and colleagues having trouble keeping up with fast-talking lawyers and differentiating between different voices in their notes. In the early 1940s, he decided to come up with an easier solution involving a microphone, so a court reporter could easily dictate exactly what was being said into a recorder to be transcribed at a later date. Since that was generally how stenographer shorthand was transcribed following court proceedings anyway, spoken and then typed out. Webb decided to eliminate the middleman. At first, he tried using a recording device inside a cigar box, but his voice could be heard in the courtroom, and most stenographers are barely noticeable when recording in shorthand. Then he tried a tomato can, which produced the same, if not worse, results, especially in the quality of the recording. Since I know a lot of podcasters listen to this show, they'll understand the struggles of finding just the right mic technique to get a quality sound thereafter. As Webb was working on a holding mechanism for the recording microphone, he had to find just the sweet spot for placement. Too far away, it sounds like he's talking through a tin can like this. Too close, and it's hard to make out exactly what he's saying like this. Webb finally found that sweet spot but he needed to find a way for his vocal transcribing to avoid disrupting or distracting court proceedings. He needed to find a way to soundproof his voice, which would also help keep out background noise. 
another problem podcasters are familiar with, especially those with neighbors who mow their lawns as soon as the record button is pressed. Webb found a Royal Chef coffee pot on sale. It looks like a pan with a handle and a tiny spout. He fastened a rubber seal on it to comfortably fit around his nose and mouth, so the microphone and his vocals were entirely contained and soundproof as he spoke. Now, since he was inventing this, it was unbeknownst to his employer, Pappy Ward of Ward and Paul, and one day he declared he would no longer use shorthand in court reportings. Instead, he'd use his new machine, boasting it as being 95% accurate. But Pappy wasn't having it at all. You ain't gonna use that horn around here if you think I'm gonna send you up to the U.S. Senate with that coffee pot on your head. You've got another thing a coming. After some trial and error, however, one day when the Senate Interior Committee called for a court reporter during what was known as Congress's busy season, Webb was the only court reporter left to use, and he walked into the courtroom with his contraption. Needless to say, people were confused, and a senator asked where the reporter was. When the senator stopped proceedings to ask Webb to hear a particular statement, Webb was able to repeat the statement verbatim, relieving any apprehension, and everyone there even applauded, according to Webb. This may sound like a happy ending to the story, but as with all technology, many court reporters and stenographers were worried the steno mask would be a replacement for those who knew shorthand, requiring less training and therefore introducing many new court reporters into the mix, making it difficult for those who use shorthand to find work. One of Webb's steno mask colleagues, Frank Kenny, had been drafted into the Navy around this time, and as luck would have it, he ran into a captain on leave who had an assignment from the Bureau of Naval Personnel to evaluate and test all known systems of court reporting with this intention of adopting one for naval personnel to train as court reporters. Kenny was able to tell the captain about the steno mask and arranged for Webb to meet with him the next morning for a demonstration. After the Navy tested the steno mask against other forms of verbatim reporting, the steno mask was the clear winner. From there, it became a popular method for court reporting, and it's still used today. A court reporter using a steno mask can even be seen in the courtroom of the 2000 Samuel L. Jackson, Tommy Lee Jones movie, Rules of Engagement. Oh, but of course, the look of the steno masks have changed over time, and it no longer looks like someone with a coffee pot over their mouths. The role of Pappy Ward was played by Adam from Everyone Has a Podcast. Information for this episode was sourced from TalkTech.com, PhillyCourtReporters.com, PitMania.com, London Review of Books, The New York Times, and BBC. For these links and more, visit the show notes at TheStoryBehindPodcast.com. Follow on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at StoryBehindPod or subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.